For those of you who are not familiar with us, we are London-based. We're a trend forecasting consultancy, and we look at the two to five year future. So genetic testing spas, longevity spas, reputation cleanup stores, they don't exist yet, uh, but I think they will. Uh, 3D print shops, I'm not covering it in this uh, presentation, but I do think that uh, telecommunications will mutate into management of one's digital life. My personal hobby horse is what will happen to the future of spas. Um, I, despite being a girl, am not a huge fan of spas. I think they are under um, performing in many senses. I think it's very nice to go to a spa where you are pampered for an hour and you come out feeling a bit better, you've had a nice massage. However, there's not that much in it for men or for people like me who are too busy. I think spas need to become more medicalized and more functional, and I think they will. And I think they also need to start looking at the real things that people care about. Uh, the elephant in the room is usually longevity. We all want to live healthier, longer, looking younger. And we need science to, uh, to help us do that. And this is a, a bit of a controversial one. <laughs> Not even sure if this is legal, to be honest. Super new, hasn't been reported yet in the press. Apparently going into vogue next month or January. Uh, it's called Cellur. It, it's a long, narrow store with nine units on the left. Little square units with a sink and an interactive mirror. They give you a whole set of samples. Everything from face wash to toner to, you know, other face-related products, and it talks you through how to use them. Uh, so there's graphics coming up on the mirror, there's audio taking you through the whole process, extremely experiential. This is based on adult stem cells. Now that's new, that's really new, and uh, they claim it's FDA regulated. I haven't checked that, but I would quite like to. So moving on to stores as knowledge portals, now I won't bore you again with the Apple Store, but there is a reason why it's the most successful retailer on the planet in terms of sales per square foot. It is a knowledge portal, and every other retailer, you know, the elephant in the room, is that they want a piece of that. So I personally think, why can't malls, for example, become adult education night schools in the evenings. It's dead time, they're not usually active. So this was a case study we, we covered last year and I felt that it was a game changer. Um, it's a store, it's DIY, you can go in, you can buy tools, you can practice with them, you can have them demonstrated. Each area has a demonstration section, but really this is a store as TV studio because every demonstration, every day, many of which are done by celebrities, they're very high quality, is streamed to the live web on the Craftsman Experience TV channel and also to their radio show. So this throws into stark contrast the idea of six people standing around watching pancakes being made in a department store. This could have 60,000 people worldwide tuning in. Okay, that's maybe slightly optimistic at the moment, but they could have hundreds, thousands, not three or four. So it does have a complete step change, I think, to our understanding of what a store could be. Stores are going to decline in number because of multi-channel. Uh, I think, you know, there's, there's little question of that. What will remain will have to be better and it will have to reach more people. And this is one of the ways that it could reach more people. So reputation management, you may have noticed, those of you who have friends who are rich and powerful, that there isn't very much on the internet about them. Isn't it funny that? <laughs> There's hardly anything on there about them. Um, I have friends who are in that position, and the reason they're in that position is that they pay reputation management companies to clean up their profile. They only have on there what they want to have on there. Some of it's legal, some of it's illegal hacking, I understand. But we, all of us, need to have a nice, clean profile, don't we? But I think we'll start to have these stores on the high streets. Um, combined, possibly, with my earlier idea of telecom stores becoming digital management, lifestyle management offers, where you learn about what do you need to conduct your digital life. So look out for some form of reputation management, I think, on the high street. 
So moving on to 3D printing, and it's just a, it is a minority pursuit, this, at the moment, but it's growing. And when we start to get inquiries from two or three or four of our clients about something like this, then we know it's happening worldwide. So personalization is a massive macro trend for everything, for service, for product delivery, for experience, you walk into a store, you expect to personalize it to your own specific liking. So you can change lighting, you can consult on the, the music that you hear, for example. And even food, we are now seeing food printing, it's the early stages. And just finally, um, we are now print, not we, obviously, scientists, in this case in America, uh, from a company called Organovo, are printing organs. So veins and arteries currently are being printed successfully and being used in the human body. They actually work. Uh, they print stem cells, exactly like a normal printer, layer by layer. So it is a very interesting and growing area. And I'm not saying we'll have organ printing on the high street, but we will have some kind of 3D printing. I personally predict that there will be a department store somewhere in the world in the next year or two that is promoting 3D printing of shoes based on 360 degree scanning of feet. That's my personal view. So on to some gaming and 3D experience. Uh, augmented reality is moving into the mall. Face recognition is massively going to grow. There are going to be privacy issues with it. And finally, my last one is interesting in that it's a very high end luxury brand doing something very interesting with digital screens. It is interesting, it is uh, extraordinary, I must admit. It's full-size, uh, large screens, which are operated by gesture. And uh, that's the end of my talk. Thank you very much.